so my rent is due in 30 days and I'm only a new Roblox developer with three months of scripting experience, no coding background, no game development background. I think I'm screwed. Uh, if I don't build a successful Roblox game in 30 days, I'll straight up be broke and homeless. So subscribe to find out if I actually make it to day 30 as a Roblox millionaire or if I end up sleeping at my local 7-Eleven dumpster. Okay, so this is day two. I want to make these platforms over here shrink and grow based on which team is getting a kill. So if the red team is getting a kill, I want the this red platform or conveyor belt to grow and I want this blue conveyor belt to shrink. And this is kind of how the teams will push each other until they reach each other's base. So let's start with that. Okay, so let's see if this adjusts the conveyors at all once I kill player two. Okay, so they moved, but barely though. I need to see it move a lot more than that. Let me make some adjustments. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, it looks like both of them actually moved towards the middle. I'm gonna work on that a little later. Okay, now I'm going to work on the player respawning back in every time they die. And I want them to respawn quickly so that they can get right back into the action. Okay, so now let's see if the player, once the player dies, let's see if they respawn immediately. And it looks like they spawned back over here. Oh, that works great. Something that I did notice, the part is subtracting correctly, but it's not moving correctly. So it's causing this to actually remove from this side. So I need to fix, I need to fix the losing team's conveyor belt movement. So let me go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now let's test if we fix the conveyor belts. Yep, that worked perfectly fine. So now this conveyor belt gained 10 studs and this conveyor belt lost 10 studs. So we basically are just growing this part and shrinking this part. And we're also moving its C-frame so that its position is actually further back so it can adjust for that shrinkage. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the game ending functionality and i want the game to end when one of the cores dies so i'm gonna have the team that kills the other team's core i'm gonna have them get awarded with extra gold and the win so they're gonna be announced as the winner okay so i was having a really rough time here 
It was late last night and I was just, I had so much brain fog. I have no idea what I was trying to do, uh, but we ended up getting it working, so. So now I am testing to see whether the game prints out that four has been destroyed. Because if it does, then that means all of my connections are working correctly. And here we got team core has been destroyed, team two has won the game. So the next step would just be to implement a game reset system where I move all of the players back into the unassigned team, move them back into the lobby, and then kind of restart the team choices again. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up day two. I'm glad I got the conveyor belts moving when a player gets kills. I was able to clean up some of the code and I was also able to script the end game function to trigger when one of the cores is destroyed. So overall, we didn't make the most progress like we did in day one. Day one, we actually made a lot of progress, but I'm happy with what I got done today. So if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you had any questions about any of my scripts, please leave a comment. If you'd like to see me progress from here to day 30, please consider subscribing because I'm going to be uploading every single day to cover this series. Okay, bye.